you please turn off that radio? Why, lady, that's Kay Kaiser. Hey, will you shut off that radio? My wife's trying to sleep. Yeah, well, you better wake her up, buddy, or she'll miss Kay Kaiser. You know who that is, honey? That's Kay Kaiser. That's right, Bing Crosby is a crooner who has four boys and he's not making a picture called my son, my son, my son, my son. <laughs> I'm sorry you missed that, Mr. Corey. And now, Miss Gabby Lawson, for your last question, Mr. Ray Wolf of Chapel Hill, North Carolina, wants you to name this song. <laughs> What'd you say? Pop goes the weasel. You popped it right on the head. <laughs> now, 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 what's the difference between a weasel, an easel, and a measle? <laughs> what's a measle? Go ahead, break out with it. <laughs> uh, a measle is a one of the measles, I guess. <laughs> oh, that's all right. Now, if there is such a word as measle, it's the singular of measles. Is that right? Or am I too rash? <laughs> now, what's an easel? Well, an easel is yeah, a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, no, what don't use your hands. Describe it in words for our radio audience. Well, an easel is a, a sort of a stand for artists to put their paintings. Right, right, that's good enough. An easel is a frame to support a painter's canvas or on which to place an object of art or a painting. That's what you said, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> now, what is a weasel? This one's very easel. <laughs> a weasel is a little man. <laughs> Are you sure? That's what I've heard my mother call my father. <laughs> well, now, could be, could be. As a slang expression, you're absolutely right. Although a weasel is really a small, four-legged animal. But that's very good, Miss Lawson. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Mr. Corey, here's your last question. Mr. Frank Martinelli of San Francisco wants you to name this song and tell us from what picture it's taken. <laughs> Hi ho, hi ho. <laughs> Correct. As off to work we go. That's right. <laughs> Is that song from Gulliver's Travel, Snow White, Pinocchio, or Gone with the Wind? It's from Pinocchio. No, no, take another guess. Don't let this get you Disney. Go ahead, take another guess. <laughs> Students! Snow White! That's right. Hi ho was the marching song of Snow White's little friends, the seven dwarfs. Now, can you name three of the seven dwarfs? <laughs> Cut it out. <laughs> Sneezy. Sneezy. I wonder how he got there. <laughs> now, two more. <laughs> oh, boy, boy. boy. <laughs> happy? Happy. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're doing fine. Sneezy and happy and, and, and one more. And... Oh, dopey. What are you looking at me for? <laughs> Just for that, you have to sing. <laughs> the song is My Bonnie Lies Over the Ocean. And in case you are nervous, Oh, by the way, here are the words to the song. In case you're nervous, we're gonna give you a bite of this cake every now and then. <laughs> just to help you along. All right, let's go, and don't stop singing. Take it away, Lyman. My Barney lies over the ocean. A bite. My Barney lies over the sea. Another bite. My Barney lies over the ocean. A bite. Oh, bring back my Barney to me. A bite. And the judges have decided that the winner of this evening's session of the College of Musical Knowledge is none other than Miss Gabby Lawson of Chicago. Join the program, honey? Oh, I certainly am. But I can't understand how they make it come out on time. That's good management. Well, where do you suppose Kay would be if it weren't for me? Right out there where he is now. <laughs> You're a very smart girl. <laughs> what a session. What a session. And now, no more cogitation. It's time for relaxation. So off with your thinking caps, on with your shoes with taps. And like the fellow once said, grab yourself a co -ed. What I mean is, come on, children. Yes, dance. Just like the...
the fella once said. Sully Mason, Jenny Sims, Harry Babbitt, Ishka Bibble, and all the gang. Take it, Sully. Like the fellow once said who sat on his hat, I'm telling you, baby, I'm leaving you flat. Like the bale of hay said that dropped from a load, I'm telling you, baby, I'm hitting that road. Yes, I'm hitting that road. Admit it, you fooled me for a spell. But just like the farmer told the well, I dug ya like the bicycle pump once said to the spell. I'm telling you, baby, I'm giving you air. So there, so there. Oh, like the fella once said. Like the fella once said. Like the fella once said to the mule that was sick. I'm telling you, baby. You're losing your kick. You know what the short chair said to tall chair? No, it's what the short chair said to tall chair. Hi, chair. <laughs> <laughs> like the fellow once said, while well, shaving his mush, I'm telling you, baby, you're getting a brush. Hey, you know what the bug said to the windshield? Yeah, that's me all over. <laughs> yeah, that's me all over. <laughs> Be off the air in two minutes. Let's wait in Kay's dressing room. Well, nothing old-fashioned about radio, is there? Nothing except the comedian's jokes. <laughs> Do you know tonight's the first time I've seen you in six months? Let me take a look at you. Oh, let me take a look at myself first. Something tells me your face is going to be an awful shock to Kay's mirror. <laughs> My lips just won't stay on. They stay on me just fine. Oh. You can't improve on that face, and you know it. Sometimes I think I ought to break down and ask you to marry me. Why don't you, Chuck? Oh, you're not rich enough. Oh, but my Aunt Margot is. Incidentally, I wrote her all about you. You know, Auntie is a lady who is very hard to please. Say what? <coughs> what what? Oh, uh, what did your Aunt Margot say? Well, she said she'd be very glad to have me back home after so many years at school. She's glad I invited friends for the night I arrived because it's the eve of my 21st birthday and I should have a party anyway. She'll be very happy to meet my young man and she hopes Mr. Kaiser won't charge you too much for playing at my party. Love and kisses Aunt Margot. Chatty old babe, isn't she? <laughs> hey, say, Chuck, there's a few things I want you to do for me without fail. Oh, Send a water, oh, Joe Norman, on the coast. This lady Chuck... comes from nice people. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Kay, I want you to meet Janice Bellacrest. Hello, Mr. Kaiser. The name is Kay. Oh. How do you do? I don't usually undress in front of strange ladies. I'm sure you don't. Come too, Kay. Janice is the girl you're going to play for tomorrow night. Oh, of course. That's the birthday party. Yes. Then you're the girl that Chuck... Uh... That's right, the girl that Chuck met when you were playing Boston. Say, you told me she was just a schoolgirl. Well, she was when I met her in finishing school. Oh, but now I'm finished. <laughs> I know you have a lot of things to do, so I'll run along. Well, did you tell Mac we'd be using the bus tomorrow? It's all taken care of, Kay. Right. I'm looking forward to tomorrow evening. Thanks. So long, boss. So long. You're not going to go back to Bellacrest Manor tonight, are you? Mm-mm. I have to finish my shopping in the morning. That's all I wanted to know. How about a short Roomba and a long Cuba Libre? Oh, I can't argue against that. Swell. I'll get a cab. Taxi! 
Broadway. I'd like to get my hands on the drunk who was driving that car. He couldn't have come much closer if he was trying to hit you. He was, Chuck. What? I don't believe that man was drunk. I think he aimed at me deliberately. Well, how do you figure that? Chuck, that's the third near accident I've had in two weeks. I didn't mention it because I can't be sure of it. But I think somebody's trying to get me out of the way. So that's why you're packing that artillery in your bag. I saw it in the mirror. Oh, but it doesn't make sense, honey. Who'd want to flatten out those beautiful curves of yours? I haven't the slightest idea who or why. You know what I think? Mm -mm. I think that you've been the victim of a series of unpleasant coincidences. You'll get back home tomorrow and never give it another thought. Maybe you're right. I'm probably dramatizing the whole thing. Certainly. Just the same, I'm glad you're coming to the house. I'll feel a lot better with you and Kay and the gang around. Sure you will. We ought to be pretty near. Two or three minutes, maybe. This will be a pleasure. I enjoy playing for the 400. You made the society page today, Kay. Listen. The guests at Janice Bellacrest's 21st birthday party tonight will dance to the music of Kay Kaiser and his band. Miss Bellacrest returns home today after an absence of three years at school. Some may remember that the luxurious Bellacrest Manor was built by the late Elmer Bellacrest, noted financial magnate and explorer. He must have been slightly peculiar, too. I read once that the old boy used to sit by the hour and play the piccolo. <laughs> well, all musicians are a little crazy. That's a lie! Uh. <laughs> Ish, must you take that fugitive from a dog pound every place we go? Well, I couldn't leave Prince at home, Kay. He's terribly sensitive. <laughs> that looks like it. What a beautiful spot for a murder. Bridge they told me about. It's the only way of getting in and out of the joint. Okay, you and Jenny go on ahead. Mac, drive around the other entrance. Hello there. Hello. Don't get blown away. Jenny, how's my favorite singer? Never better. Go right on in. Are we on time? You nearly beat me. I've only been here an hour myself. Jurgen, please see that the boys are taken care of. Yes, miss. When it blows up here, it really blows. Yes, this ought to be a great place to fly a kite. Just make yourselves at home. Come on, Jenny, I'll show you the powder room. I must look windblown. Hmm. Well, this is something. We never played a party in a museum before. Well, the old boy certainly collected a lot of souvenirs. Yeah, I bet he had a towel from every hotel in the world. Well, here's a cozy little nook. Yeah. This is probably where Elmer practiced exploring. <laughs> I'd better give the boys St. Bernard dogs in case they lose each other. Hey, get a load of this, Kay. Looks like a dart game. Yeah. Blowgun, Malay Peninsula. The puncture made by the dart is almost invisible, and the poison cannot be traced in the body. The victim appears to have died from natural causes. Cute, huh? Listen, Chuck, don't ever book us on the Malay Peninsula. Well, Chuck, how do you like the place? Oh, don't tell me. Oh, you just saved me from telling a horrible lie. You haven't seen anything yet. The house is full of these gadgets. Yes, very homey. I'd like to get rid of them all, but Aunt Margot won't hear of it. I think they make the place look creepy. Don't you, Kay? Well, I don't know. I, I... I... Oh, there you are, darling. Come and meet my friend. I want you to know my aunt, Miss Margot Bellacrest. Uh, this is Chuck Deems, the young man I told you about, Annie. How do you do? I'm very happy to know you, Miss. And this is Mr. Kay Kaiser. Kay Kaiser. Yes. Yes, I know. Good evening, ma'am. Of course, Aunt Margot, you've heard Kay's music on the radio. I've heard Mr. Kaiser's music, but not on the radio. It comes to me from another source. Won't you come into the study, Mr. Kaiser? You must rest a moment after your long trip. Come on, Chuck. I'll show you where the boys are going to play. Oh, all right. 
Oh, won't you need me, Chuck? Well, don't bother, Kay. I'll arrange the usual setup. Come with me. You thinking of buying that ish? No, I wouldn't give you a nickel for that bird. That's the worst job a mountain I've ever seen. How do you know? My uncle was an animal stuffer. He was? Well, sure. That's terrible. Look at there. The tail ain't on right, and he's got the eyes in the wrong sockets. Boy, whoever stuffed that bird sure was an amateur. <laughs> I'm so glad you came, Mr. Kaiser. You've made me very happy. You know, you and I are kindred souls. We are? Why? Because... You ask questions on the radio. I ask questions, too. But you ask them of the living, while I... I ask them of the dead. Of the... of the dead? I have pierced the veil. I speak to those who have gone to the other side. Oh, yes. The other side. Come with me a moment. There he is. Sweet soul. You never knew my dear departed brother Elmer, did you, Mr. Kaiser? No, I, I don't think I ever had the pleasure. You'll meet him here. And you'll be his friend. He, too, loved music. And when he speaks to me now, it's sometimes through the voice of the instrument he loved. The... the piccolo? Yes, the piccolo. Showing Mr. Kaiser the family album, Aunt Margot? Mr. Kaiser and I have a great deal in common, Janice. Uh, she means the questions. You see, we both ask questions. Oh, Auntie, I hope you haven't been boring Kay with those wild ideas. Is communicating with the spirit of your father a wild idea? Please, darling. Aunt Margot's been letting her imagination run away with her. You will believe when you see for yourself. They come to me in the darkness. The strange, lonely voices of those who have gone beyond. Elmer's voice comes, too. And sometimes his face. And then... there are other faces. Faces of those who have long since gone beyond the veil. Mr. Kaiser knows what I mean, don't you, Mr. Kaiser? Oh, hello there. I thought you were taking a nap. Well, I was, my dear, thank you. I'm so sorry if I startled your friend, but I didn't want to interrupt your Aunt Margaret. Oh, I'm quite sure you're welcome. I'd like you to meet one of my dearest friends, Judge Mainwaring, Mr. Kaiser. Good what evening. Do you do? Good evening, Spencer. Well, I must say you're looking very well, Margot. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, Jenny, I'll be right with you. Come on with us, Kay, and I'll show you to your rooms. Coming out, Margot? Yes, dear. Uh, please don't think me rude, but do you mind if I ask a personal question? Not at all. The old lady, Miss Bellacrest, is she wacky? Wacky? I mean, is she inclined to be... As her attorney for several years, Mr. Kaiser, I can assure you that Margot Bellacrest is just as sane as I am. Oh, I, I see. Well, thanks, just the same. I, pardon me. Well, so long. I'll see you later. Gentlemen, your room is down the hall. I'm glad of that. Oh, so am I. <coughs> Mr. Kaiser, this is your room, sir. Thank you. decorated this room, Robert Ripley? This was the master's room, sir. He was quite a collector. Yes, the master would have been a perfect guest for Harvey Lobby. His hobby caused his death, sir. His hobby caused his death? Yes, sir. Some African savages accused Mr. Bellacrest of looting their temple. Oh, but he was only collecting, of course. Of course. But the natives misunderstood. 
Judge Mainwaring said they literally cut the master into a ribbon, sir. Judge Mainwaring? Yes, sir. He was with the master when it happened. The judge barely escaped with his life. Can I do anything else, sir? No, no, no. You've made me very happy. I hope you'll be comfortable, sir. Comfortable? Hi, boy. I beg your pardon. I trust I haven't disturbed you. Not at all. Not at all. Come right in. Oh, you are in, aren't you? Yes. I just came to tell you that the spirit of Alma Bellacrest is in this room. I'm sure you'll find it a friendly one. Oh, yes. We'll get along just fine together. Oh, forgive me. I'm Prince Saliano. How, how do you do? Miss Margot Bellacrest has told me that you are a believer. I am? I mean, she has? Yes. And it is well. In this house, it is dangerous for those who ridicule. The spirits are strongly displeased with the skeptical. I can understand exactly how they feel. I shall go now. Forgive me again for this intrusion. Uh, drop in again sometime. Yes. Yes, I shall. get the wrong impression. I didn't know until today that Auntie had gone psychic, or I wouldn't have brought you up here. Well, Kay's broad-minded, but I never knew there were houses like this except in mystery books. That's where they belong, in mystery books. <laughs> of course, Jurgen doesn't look his part. In the stories I've read, the butler is always cruel and wicked-looking. And I'm afraid Judge Mainwaring has much too nice a voice to frighten anyone. Of course he has. Judge Mainwaring was Daddy's oldest friend, and jurgen has been with us for years. So even if the house does seem haunted, I'm sure that... <gasps> Why, what is it? Janice, what's wrong? There was a face at that window. A face? Not a soul out there. It must be your imagination. Oh, of all the stupid things. What a shame, Jenny, and it's entirely my fault. Oh, quel dommage. Wouldn't it be just like me to do a thing like this? You take that right off and wear one of mine. I hope it fits. I've never sung in my underwear before. Here's one that made the boys at the senior prom absolutely swoon. Mm, I'm glad I tore mine now. Can you even fix this, mademoiselle? I'm sure it'll fit. Just slip into it. Jenny, it's perfect. It couldn't be better if you were poured into it. If I ruin this one, I'll die. Oh, I knew I felt naked. I forgot my bracelet. and all the lights went out. Well, who screamed? I'm afraid I did. Is something wrong, my dear? Oh, yes, there is. Oh, Judge, we're in our room. Just a minute, boys, please, one at a time. Well, the lights went out all over the house. 
Is that what caused the excitement? Well, yes, I screamed. It's terribly silly. Well, I'm afraid our lighting system isn't very dependable during a storm like this. Well, then let's just blame it on the weather and forget about it. <laughs> See what happens when I throw a party? Never a dull moment. <laughs> let's go, Jenny. All right. See downstairs. Please. We'll be right with you. Uh, Chuck. There's nothing to be upset about, Chuck. You know what lightning will do to these power plants. What's the idea? Listen, Chuck, I just saw something that gave me the creeps. What? Take a look at this. Why, when I saw this thing sticking into... Why, well, it's gone. What's gone? One of those blowgun needles that kills you without leaving any trace. It was sticking right here. Oh, it was? I saw it with my own eyes. Kay, I think you're going a little screwy. Oh, you do, huh? Well, I'm not screwy enough to stay in this place. And now, wait a minute, Kay. Take it easy. You can't do this to me. Oh, can I? You can't ruin a girl's party just because you've got a case of nerves. Nerves, my baton. Nobody's gonna keep me around the house where some screwball is throwing poison darts. Why, if his aim had been just a little bit better, Jenny would have been wearing that thing in the back of her neck. But I didn't see any dart. Oh, when you looked, it was gone. And the next time you look, I'll be gone. Why do you get me into these things? Oh, all right, Kay, wait a minute, please. Maybe somebody did throw a poison dart, but if what you say is true, that means that Janice is in danger. We've got to stay here and protect her. I'm in love with her, Kay. You are, Chuck? Yes, I am. And who is she in love with? Well, me. Then you protect her. I'm taking the gang back to town. I refuse to leave Janice alone in this house. OK, then take her with you, but let's get out of here. Yeah, but... But, Kay, wait. What about our clothes? Clothes are no good to a dead man. Come on. Oh, be reasonable, Kay. Where are you rushing to? I'm not rushing to, I'm rushing from. Listen, Judge, there's something going on in this house that I don't want any part of. Goodbye. Well, does Janice know you're leaving? We're taking Janice with us. Now that we're here, Janice, where are the men? That's right, where are the men? Now, quiet, Wolf. Just take it easy. For you, I've invited eight hand-picked campus heroes. And they'll be here any minute. Mm -hmm. The oh, men over here, Judge! Oh, 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 now we're talking. Oh, yeah. I wasn't sure everybody... Oh, pardon me, Miss Bellacrest. Oh, Kay, I want you to meet my friends. Yeah. Ladies, this is Kay Kaiser. How are you doing? Good evening. Oh, uh, may I see you a minute, please? Why, surely. I'll be right back. Oh, no, oh, Listen, Miss Bellacrest, there's something we must tell you. Believe me, Janice, this isn't my idea. I hope you won't misunderstand, but I've decided to... Miss. It just went up in smoke. The bridge? The one we just came over? Yes, miss. We just There's no cause for alarm, ladies. The bridge has been struck by lightning. I saw it from the window upstairs. Well, tonight of all nights, this would have to happen. Oh, now, don't worry Never about it. Huh? Yes. There's really nothing for your guests to fear, so, so please don't let it spoil your party. But, Janice, didn't you say that bridge was the only way of getting to the house? Oh, yes, it is. Or rather, it was. It isn't going to be much of a party, is it? It's the only real adventure I've had since my first blind date. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we're going to stay here all night, I'd better call my mother. Oh, go right ahead. Isn't it dreadful? All of us girls here are no men. Golly, that's a shame. Operator. Hello. The telephone is probably dead. The storm, you know. Oh. Now we're really still. I can't control lightning. Kay, will you please have the boys play something? I think it'll help quiet things down. Why, certainly. Thank you. Chuck, what were you going to tell me? Tell you? Yes, you know, when Kay called me aside. Oh, that. Well, uh... Oh, you see, Kay wanted to move the band out the other end of the ballroom, but I talked him out of it. Oh, I see. Well, come on, then. Let's go. 
Girls, let's go into the ballroom. Kay and the boys are going to play for us. Oh, 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 don't worry, Caroline. We don't have anything to come out for that bear. Children, I want you to hear a handsome lad who really sings a song. It's Harry Babbitt. I've gotten so that I don't even know if the heaven is blue. All I retain in my poor adult brain is you. Cause you've got me this way, say, what are you gonna do about it? What are you gonna do about it? You've got me this way, crazy for you. Kissed me one day, then seeing that I was true about it. What did you go and do about it? You left me this way, bluer than blue. You thought it was funny, my falling so hard. I'm laughing my sides off, honey. Oh, you're really a car. You've got me this way, say, now that I'm in a stew about it, what am I gonna do about it? I'm just gonna stay crazy for you. You've got me this way, say. I'm in a stew about it. What am I gonna do about it? I'm just gonna stay crazy for you. That was great, Harry. Thanks a lot. And thank you, Bells of Bella Crest with no boyfriend. <laughs> this thunderous applause from so vast a multitude of music lovers makes us purr with pleasure. <laughs> and if the patrons of this palatial parlor will permit, we'd like to do another number. Oh. Thank you, and we're ready. Gentlemen, be seated. <laughs> That's what I said, a one, a two. <laughs> Tingling, 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 it's the bad humor man. Hey, little kitties, do you hear that noise? You better fly, better fly, better fly. Here comes the enemy of girls and boys. Oh, what a guy, what a guy, what a guy. Hear him yell, hear his bell. So drop your philosophies and drop your toys. And run, hell, man. Tingling, tingling, tingling. It's the bad humor man. Tingling, tingling, tingling. With a frown on his pan. He's a gloomy Gus and the grouch on wheels. He's one of America's foremost heels. So he sings tingling, tingling. As he goes on his way. With the swagger rumbling, he keeps grumbling. His show is an awful day. Oh boy, school is out, school is out. London Bridge is falling down. Day by night. With pleasure, kitty. Oh, up every morning at the break of day. What a life, what a life, what a life. Cold cup of coffee on the breakfast tray. What a wife, what a wife, what a wife. Oh, be warm, beans go warm. And so as I wander on my weary way, I sing this song. Tingling. 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 I'm the bad humor man. Tingling. 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 With a frown on my pants. He's mean as 
Sam and I mean will agree. Yes, I hate people and they hate me. So he sings tingling, tingling. As he goes on his way. With my wagon rumbling, I keep a grumbling. Wow, what a wowsy day. That's no way to act. Now why be mad? Well, fitness is good, but my humor's bad. Then come on, kids, with your musical toys. They'll make you one of the happiness boys. First birthday. Dolly? Today I am a man. <laughs> and now I'll let you in on a secret. I had a beautiful surprise planned tonight for Aunt Margot's favorite rug maker, but it went haywire. You mean Prince Saliano? Prince. He's a prince like I'm the Queen of Sheba. I did a little snooping when I arrived today, and I found that poor Aunt Margot's been subsidizing that turban top Svengali for months and months. On the level? Mm hmm. She's already given him a young fortune for the relief of unemployed spirits, or something equally silly. Well, if you think he's a phony, why don't you make him pack up his spirits and take him back to the distillery? Aunt Margot's the boss, Kay. You see, Daddy left her the house and most of his money. I guess he thought it would spoil me less to struggle along with a small trust fund. But what about the surprise? Well, that. Have you ever heard of Professor Carl Fenninger? Isn't he the psychic expert who exposed all those fake mediums? Exactly. Well, I had Judge Mainwaring call him up and invite him to the party. Well, why didn't he come? Well, lightning trouble. With that bridge down, he just won't be able to make it. I hope I'm not intruding, Janice. Oh, of course not, darling. You're just in time. I've been telling them about his royal slyness. Oh. You made it clear, I hope, that I don't entirely share your opinion of Prince Saliano. You see, my legal training teaches me not to jump to conclusions without proof. I'll bet Professor Fenninger would have given you proof. But anyway, now you know why I have no surprise. I think perhaps I have one for you, Janice. You have? Yes. Now then. Uh, Miss Bellacrest, Miss Sims, Mr. Kaiser, Mr. Deems, allow me to present Professor Carl Fenninger. You. Thank you. And uh, please forgive me for eavesdropping, but just part of my profession. But I don't understand. How did you get here with the bridge down? Oh, I arrived, of course, before the bridge collapsed, but uh, I took the liberty of making a brief investigation without announcing my presence. Very clever of you, Professor. Yes, very clever. Incidentally, Mademoiselle, I owe you an apology. An apology? That face you saw at your window, it was mine. Oh, Professor, you've made me feel better already. Dinner is served, Miss Bellacrest. Thank you, Jergens. Professor, you'll join us, of course. Come on, everybody. Judge? Yes. Tell him. Aren't you dining, Judge? I thought I'd have a cigarette first. I think I would, too. Ah, the man with the golden helmet. Yes, Rembrandt. He was indeed the master of tomorrow. I think that's one of his best. Observe that mysterious struggle between light and shadow. 
Why is she still alive? Sully, I know Mist again last night. If you have missed too many times, she'll certainly suspect something. We won't miss tonight. We must arrange for Saliano to conduct a seance. I've planned to have it look like an accident when the room's in darkness. Yes, I think Rembrandt chose the perfect subject for his time. I beg your pardon, I forgot something. I'm always leaving this case around somewhere. I hope I didn't disturb you. And by the way, dinner is served. Who is this fellow Kaiser? Some band leader. We've nothing to fear from him. He's perfectly harmless. <laughs> Thank you. Kay, did you tell him? Not yet. Well, come on and tell him now. Are you sure it'll be all right? I'm positive. Come on. So you see, my work might be dangerous, but never boring. Oh, absolutely fascinating. Oh, pardon me. May I see you a moment, Professor? Madame, excuse me, please. Well, thank God. He is interesting. Listen, Professor. Janice wants us to get Saliano to hold a seance so you can expose him. She's convinced he's the faker. That wouldn't surprise me at all. Fine. Now, if we work together, you can be a great help. I'll get him steamed up, then you hop in and challenge him so he won't be able to back down. Is that OK with you? I couldn't have thought of a better plan myself. Good. I'm certainly glad you are here, Professor. Miss Bellacrest is a mighty nice girl, and I'd hate to see anybody take advantage of her. Naturally. But we'll take care of her, won't we? Yes, indeed. Uh, we'll take care of her. Oh, boy, boy, I can hardly wait. Am I going to enjoy this? Attention, please. Be quiet, everybody. I think with a little persuasion, we might get Jenny Sims to sing for us. Oh, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. I'd love to sing for you, but of course, we're really not prepared. Are we boys? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'd know you anywhere. I'd know that grin. I'd know you anywhere when you walked in. I would tingle with a single glance in your eyes Watching the starlight dance in your eyes mm, You saw my vacant stare, you understood I'd love you anywhere, honest I would certain this would happen, strange as it seems. I'd know you
This is splendid. Delightful. Well, thank you very much. What beautiful quality. What tender expression. Watch me go to work on him. You have a real voice, my dear. It's criminal to waste it on such trash. That may be trash to you, Prince Saliano, but modern music is our business. Oh, you know what I mean, Prince. We have our business and you have your business. Please, do not refer to my calling as a business. Oh, no offense. I just meant that everybody has to stick to his own racket. Racket? Do you dare to suggest that the practice of the occult sciences is a racket? Do not merely suggest it, Mr. Kaiser. Insist upon it. If you're trying to provoke me, Professor Fenninger, you're wasting time. Your guest is unbearably rude, Janice. Professor Fenninger, I demand that you apologize to Prince Saliano for daring to question his integrity. Forgive me, madame. I simply meant I should enjoy witnessing one of these so-called uh, psychic manifestations. So-called? Prince Saliano, I insist that you conduct a seance at once. But, Miss Bellacrest... I insist. I will not have these people think we're fools. Very well. For you, I will do it. But I warn you, for those who scoff at their existence, the spirits consider no punishment too drastic. We're going to have a seance. Do you really see spirits? We're going to have it exciting. What happened? You were great. You were terrific. Thanks a lot, Professor. I appreciate your cooperation. And I appreciate yours. This is just what I wanted to happen. Oh, my dear, do you think your birthday party is the proper place to hold a seance? It's the perfect place to cure Aunt Margo. Come on, everybody, let's go to the ballroom. Come on, girl. Chuck, can you come on? Ish, why do you suppose the prince wears that towel around his head? Well, he probably just washed his hair and he can't do a thing with it. Oh. <laughs> why do I have to waste my time outwitting morons? Make sure not to be near her chair when it happens. It must look accidental. Certainly. Time is at hand. Make ready for his exalted highness, Prince Saliano of Raleipur. You notice a pair of these spheres guarding every entrance and exit of this room. Any interference that breaks the invisible ray between them will meet with destruction. Lest anyone is tempted to toy with this instrument of death, let me demonstrate its effect. This room is now sealed with the fire of death. Let no one attempt to enter or leave. Boy, we're in trouble. I wish I was back at the palace theater. You see, my dear professor, all the spheres are in excellent working order. Yes, I'm convinced the room is very effectively guarded, but may I inspect that tent? Please do. It is desirable to have setters of both sexes. Perhaps some of Mr. Kaiser's musicians will oblige. Why, certainly. I'll sit in, Kay. Fine. Uh, Harry, Ish, Sully. You don't mind, do you, fellas? Oh, no. If I don't come back, call me up on the Ouija board. Are you satisfied, Professor? Yes, I am. Please continue. Will you all kindly be seated? Come on, Jenny. And you too, Mr. Kaiser. This is swell. I'll be able to watch him better from there. Excellent idea. And remember, if you need help, you just yell. Thank you. Mr. Kaiser, perhaps your excellent pianist could play something uh, suitable to the mood. With pleasure. Acrobat music, Lyman. Mr. Kaiser. Thank <laughs> you.
I shall ask Judge Mainwaring to assist me with the lights, as usual. If for any reason the trance must be broken, strike the gong three times. I quite understand, Prince Saviano. One thing more. Miss Bellacrest, the contact will be stronger with your aunt at one end of the semicircle and you at the other. Do you mind? Not at all. I like being in, man. Kay, will you change with me, please? Why, certainly. A change might do me good. Presently, I shall assume a state of trance in which the higher mind merges with the astral portion of the human ego. In that state, I shall command the spirit of Elma Bellacrest. Other spirits may make themselves known, speaking through the medium of sounds associated with them. If you recognize them, answer quickly. And now, everyone will join hands. Shucks, this is fun, isn't it? You may dim the lights. Om Mani Padme Hum. of evil is trying to enter this room. But have no fear. The fires of death will guard us. come for those who would commune with their lost ones.
Janet. 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 Is she all right? She wasn't hit, was she? No, she must have fainted. She fell from her chair. Oh, it's lucky she fell before that chandelier did. Yes. Will you all stand back, please? Miss Bellacrest isn't hurt. Oh, This man is not faking. He's really in a trance. The gong. He told Judge Main why aren't it? What has happened? Is anything wrong? Yes, there is something wrong. My niece narrowly escaped a tragedy. There's a disturbing influence here. It's a good thing it disturbed your niece, or she'd be a spirit now herself. You! You are the disturbing influence. Me? Please don't excite yourself, Margot. Miss Bellacrest, let me assist you to your room. There, that's better, honey. How do you feel? Check that face. My father's face. Don't think about it now, dear. Oh, no, right. Janice, don't worry. Right. Right. Can't we take her upstairs? Uh, yes, of course. Come on, darling. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that under the circumstances, we had better consider this evening at an end. On behalf of Miss Bellacrest and her aunt, I apologize for this unfortunate accident. Nobody can tell me that was an accident. Why, well, Saliana asked her to sit in that chair. Yes. And if she hadn't changed seats, you would have been sitting under that chandelier. That's right. And you might not have fainted. That's right. <laughs> we get out of this place alive. Well, we got ourselves in. We'll have to get ourselves out. We got ourselves in. You got ourselves in. All right, all right. I'm doing the best I can. At least Janice and Jenny are safe. I personally saw that every door and window in their room was locked and bolted. That reminds me. And I feel better being closer to them. I hope you don't mind my staying here with you, Kay. Oh, no. Oh, no. I, I don't mind. I can go to my own room if you think my snoring will bother you. No, no, I like a little snoring. It soothes me. <laughs> if I talk in my sleep, just ignore me. Oh, I'll fall right asleep, too, and then we'll talk things over. And we've got plenty to talk about. What's the idea? Either I'm getting weak or the dampness has this window swollen. Why did you close that? Now we won't be able to breathe in here. That's why I closed it, so we'll keep on breathing. I'm surprised at you acting the way you are. Why did I tell your scoutmaster about this? Listen, one man handles our legal affairs because he's a lawyer. You manage our business because you're a manager. But this is a matter of keeping my skin whole, and brother, you're no taxidermist. I'll handle this my way. Well, you beat me. Yeah, I beat you, and you beat me. But I don't want anybody else to come in and beat the both of us. Well, if anybody gets in here now, he'll have to come down the chimney. Say, I could swear there's a draft in this room. Oh, you're anemic. You know something, Chuck? Janice is absolutely right. That Saliano is a phony. Yeah? How can you tell? Oh, I can tell just by looking at a man. Now, you take Fennens, you. I took one look at him, and I knew I could trust him with my life. Kind of a gift, I guess. Wonderful thing. Yes, sir. With energy in this house, I feel a lot safer. Well, good night, Chuck. Good night.
Look, look, look. Hey, what's the matter with you? What is it? Look, over there. I don't see anything. Well, it's gone. There was a little white thing, and it was swaying like this. Will you stop that? Go back to sleep. There's nothing in this room, and you know. <laughs> You passed out. Oh, did I? Yeah. Prince paid us a little surprise visit and nearly scared us to death. Oh, is that what was in the bed with us? Uh-huh. But uh, what happened to that white thing? Oh, I don't know. It disappeared when the dog got under the covers. That's funny. It was wagging back and forth like a dog's tail. That's it. Prince's tail. Since when does Prince's tail light up in the dark? I'll show you. Turn off those lights. Hey, Prince. Hey, Prince, look. Nice, Prince. Nice, doggy. Well, can you imagine that? Here, Prince. Here, Prince. Come, Come on, boy. Prince. <laughs> hmm, this, as Shakespeare said, is an interesting tale. Lights out again, Chuck. I knew it. I knew it. You knew what? Chuck, this stuff is phosphorus paint. That's what made his tail glow. Now, what else did we see tonight that did that? You mean it glowed in the dark? Yes. I don't remember. Good night at the seance. Right, those faces. Why, it's as simple as shooting fish in a bucket. Oh, boy. Oh, wait a minute, where are we going? The professor finds you. Wait till he hears about this. Well, don't you think we'd better wait until morning? Maybe you're right. The sensible thing is to stay behind locked doors. Now you're talking, behind locked doors. Hey, how did Prince get in here? Oh, why, he came in through the... Prince! Here, Princey! Prince. Princey, dog! Where are you? How'd you get hey, in Prince. here? Princey! 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 Why, he's gone! Say, what is this? Now we not only don't know how he got in, but we also don't know how he got out. Hey, Prince! <coughs> There's your answer. A secret panel. I told you there was a draft in here. Here, take this flashlight. Now, if we can find out where Prince got that phosphorus on his tail, we may find out a lot of other things. Oh, here we go. Nice, cheerful little place, isn't it? Yeah. Either it was built this way, or they have awful big mice around here. Look, the light switch. Turn it on. We're gonna get to the bottom of this thing. I thought it was a light switch. You also thought it was a good idea to come out here. Would you mind? Hmm? Oh. If you ever catch me near a secret panel again, don't argue with me. Slug me. With pleasure. You better shield that light. You're right. Let's be nice and quiet. Yeah. That's the stuff. Nice and quiet. Shh. Dummy, when you see one? You don't really want me to answer that, do you, Chuck? It's all I'd need to get hit in the head with a thing like that. <laughs> Benny Goodman fan.
Hey, where are you? You tell me. Oh, what's the matter? Something flew in my eye. I wish it was the plane for Los Angeles. Hey, easy now. Don't lose me. Could we be lost any worse than we are now? Wait a minute, Kay. Give me your hand. Say, your fingers are swollen. And boy, do you need a manicure. Not so fast. Funny acoustics in here. You sound far away. I am far away. so excited. What's wrong with you? Which way now? Let's follow Prince. He can see as well as we can, and he smells better. Unless I'm mistaken, we came out to the garden the hard way. Hard way is right. The last time I stayed underground that long, I came out in Brooklyn. Where do you suppose they keep the soap and towels? That hedge is giving signals. Saliano? I don't know, but we're gonna find out. All right, on your feet. Hey, Ish. I'm sorry, Ish. What was it? A cloudburst? Why are you prowling around out here? Well, I was only looking for Prince. He's been gone awful long. What made you take Prince out this time of night? <laughs> Why, Kay, you know how headstrong he is. How about getting back in the house? I've got a feeling we're being watched. Well, let's take a look around the garden first. Hey, what's he looking for? Phosphorus. Oh, phosphorus. Hey, did you? Did you come out through the front door or the garden door? We came out through that fountain. Through the fountain? Yes. Oh. What are you doing to that sundial? Setting it. It was two hours slow. Ish, I wish I had known you when you were alive. <coughs> hey, Prince! Prince, come on, boy, come on! <laughs>
Yes. To your room. I'll come immediately. Are you little Sir Echo? Little Sir Echo? No, oh, never mind. Now you stay here. I'm going to see if he's with Sully and Harry. Little Sir Echo. <laughs> That's a good one. Kay. 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 Oh, there you are. What are you doing? I was looking for you in a bureau drawer. Well, I looked all... Where did you disappear to? Never mind that. I'm glad you're all here. Listen, fellas, we're in trouble. Did you just find that out? Stop clowning. There's something terrible going on in this house. Somebody's trying to murder Janice Bellacrest. Murder? Yes, they've tried tonight and missed. And I'm positive they'll try again. Good night, Kay. We better get Jenny out of her room. Well, what, and leave Janice all alone? That's right. We couldn't do that. That's one reason. And what's more, if we did move Jenny, whoever's out to get Janice would know we were onto something. But I've got a better idea. Well, let's have it. We gotta steam up another seance. What? Another seance? You mean we gotta get them spirits up again tonight? Look, I think Saliano's running this racket, but he can't be doing it alone. And until we find out who's in with him, nobody's safe. Now, which would you rather do? Take a chance on being strangled in bed or die like men? Well, I'm tired. If I have to die, I'd just as soon die in bed. Are you with me, fellas? Oh, certainly sure we are. are. Okay, come, on, come on. Well, where to now? You all wait here. I'm going to get Professor Finninger. Yes, sir. I love playing for the 400. Professor Finninger? Professor Finninger? What, Professor? Go ahead. I thought I heard voices, so I went to make sure Miss Bellacrest was safe. Well, you heard us talking in my room. Say, do you have a gun? I'm never without one. Never. Good. You know, I'm convinced there are dangerous criminals in this house, and I think I know how we can catch them. Well, you do. How? You've got to make Saliano hold another seance. Another? But why? I'll explain later. Suppose Saliano refuses. Judge Mainwaring can make him do it. You think he'll help us, Professor? Oh, I can depend on the judge, but... Are you certain your plan will work? As long as you can shoot straight, you haven't a thing to worry about. That's true. All right, I'll speak to the judge. And thank you for taking me to your confidence. Well, I wouldn't think of making a move without you. Oh, he's a wicked-looking man, that Prince Saliami. Well, what'd he say? Fellas, we're set. If this scheme works, somebody's gonna get a terrible shock tonight. I hope it isn't me. I don't think I could stand it. Now, here's what we do. Another seance? That's ridiculous, of course. On the contrary, 
suggestion of our friend Mr. Kaiser suits us beautifully. Are you mad? There's no time to be wasted on Saliano's nonsense. We have to get rid of the girl. But you forget it's much easier to arrange an accidental death downstairs than in Janice's bedroom. Yes, but if I proposed our other seance, it would surely arouse suspicions. You won't propose it. Margot Bellacrest will demand it. Oh. I see. And one more thing. You watch Mr. Kaiser very carefully. And if he should attempt to leave the ballroom. But what about the accident? If she should happen to step between the electrical spheres of the darkness, it would be tragic. Obviously accidental. said they wouldn't come down to see the spirit of 76. Well, it's silly. In a house like this, I don't want to be alone unless I have plenty of people around me. Hey, don't worry. I know it'll work. Oh, gentlemen, everything is all set. Jenny and Janice are locked safely in their room, and I left two of the boys to look after them. Very wise precaution. Yeah, I'll say it is. Well, let's get going. Janice will be down. I'll see to that myself. Oh, Prince Saliano. Yes, Mr. Kaiser. Miss Bellacrest said to go right ahead. She's, uh, she's been delayed. I see. Oh, and by the way, you do want music, don't you? If it is not too much trouble. Trouble? Why, this time I shall conduct personally. On Janice. Janice? We're waiting, dear. Chuck, what'll I do? Well, we've got to go through with this. You'll take care of her, won't you, Professor? Yes. And this time you can depend on me. Oh, good. And I'll be right beside you. Well, I'm going too. Sully, you and Ace get in there. They may need you. A dearly beloved spirit wishes to contact us. We will all join hands. Oh, 
mani parne hum Saliana, Professor, but look out for the other one. Whoever it is, he's a killer. All right, hey, Mr. Kaiser. You can sign off now. Before I kill you, I'll thank you for the document you removed from my briefcase. You mean that one? Is a bar. Well, let's try the back one. Oh, no, no, no. 
Mr. Kaiser! Yes, Professor. Where is Semiano? Knocked out. With mean wearing in the hidden room. How do you reach it? Through the settee. No, wait a minute. It's locked. Oh, we'll break it open. Yeah, you yeah. stay here, I'll get them before they come to. Remember, we're depending on you. Prince Soliano. Oh, what a fool I've been. And Judge Mainwaring. But why should they want to kill you? Well, I can tell you why. Here, read this. What is it, Kate? It's a codicil to your father's will, directing your Aunt Margot to turn everything over to you on your 21st birthday. But I don't understand. Well, I do. The judge has been bleeding your aunt through Saliano. With you handling the bankroll, they knew they'd never get another quarter. Oh, the swindlers, the thieves. Will you let me in, please? Who are you? I'm Professor Carl Fenninger. Fenninger? Well, you can't be Professor Fenninger. Professor Fenninger's down in that secret room. Stand back! Throw up your hands, all of you. You're a very clever young man, Mr. Kaiser. See how many clever things you can think of in the few minutes before this explosive blows you all to bits. But you can't kill all these people like that. It's crazy. It's mass murder. You'll never get away with it. Identifying your bodies will be rather difficult. I dare say the police will assume that ours are among them. Like that fuse. Goodbye, Mr. Kaiser. I regret that our acquaintance should be blown up so soon. Don't do it! Don't do such a nice dog. I know I should have been kinder to him. Prince was a hero, Ace. We'll build a monument to him. Sure we will. What's that? It's, it's Prince! Prince! Prince. 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 Now, if anybody knows how to build a bridge, we can go home. <laughs> oh, Mr. Kaiser, how can I ever thank you? Well, how can I ever thank you, ma'am? Thank me? For what? Well, that gadget that talks like the wind. It gave me a great idea for a band number. We're going to let our instruments speak for themselves. <laughs> present a new miracle of electricity, the Sonovox. Harry Babbitt, using special Sonovox units, gives diction to the tones of the instruments as they play. Harry forms the words, but the instruments sing them. Sing it, saxes. I know you anywhere. I know that grin. I know you anywhere when you walked in. Mine. We'll be listening. Mm, I've got a one-track mind. It's got a point of view. Oh, the day long, it's busy with thoughts of you. That's lovely, Jenny. Mm, I've got a one-track heart. Can't call my heart my own. Early and late, it's beating for you. For you alone, I've got the 
stubbornest pair of arms that reach in your direction. Track mine has this advantage too. It keeps telling me to tell you that I love you, and I must do what my one track mind tells me to do. I knew there was something I wanted to tell you. Ladies and gentlemen of the motion picture audience, we've had a lot of fun making our picture, and we certainly hope you've enjoyed it. But there's one thing I want to get clear in your mind. Remember Boris Karloff, Peter Lorre, Bela Lugosi? Well, they aren't really murderers at all. In fact, they are nice fellows and good friends of mine. You know, things like this don't actually happen. It's uh, all in fun. And so we'll be on the air, as usual, next Wednesday night. And until then, we'll be thinking of you. So long, everybody.